one kind of decisions that managers uh, frequently face is to compare the benefits of lower costs versus the investment that's necessary. So do we want to buy this piece of equipment that's going to increase efficiency? Is the cost savings big enough to justify, a, you know, to, such that it's a good, a good investment, a good project? So let's take a look at how we evaluate a project like this. But as you'll see, the numbers look a little different, but the approach is the same. So here it's the AC project. So we've got Patriot Theaters. They're considering buying a new air conditioning unit. Oh, no. Increase efficiency. It would cost $90,000 today. Be depreciated straight line to 10000 over two years. So we know that about the equipment. In two years, it'll be sold for an after-tax cash flow of 15000 So we've already done the work, so we know that we'll get a certain amount of money. There'll be some taxes that'll be involved, taxes paid, and we subtract the money we get minus the taxes paid. It nets out to 15000 In one year, cost would be lowered by 35000 And in two years, cost would be lowered by 50000 so we know the cost savings. So do we want to spend 90000 for a piece of equipment that's going to save us 35 in a year, 50 in two years, and that we can also sell and after taxes bring home $15,000? Tax rate's 40%. Cost of capital is 8%. So let's take a look at how we want to approach it. And it's going to be the exact same approach, is what is the depreciation in each year? And as we saw, the depreciation would be the 90 minus the 10 divided by 2, so it's going to be 40 each year. Figure out the net income each year. And so in that case, we know that revenues are going to be zero because there's no information on this affecting revenues. We know the cost in year one are expected to go down by 35, and in year two go down by 50. Work it through to get net income and then add that back to depreciation of 40 to get operating cash flow. So as we already did, depreciation is 40,000 years one and two. So here is where you want to be real careful. Rev Let's take a look at year one. Revenues are zero. Costs are expected to go down by 35,000. And depreciation is actually expected to go up by 40,000 because you have this piece of equipment that with the AC unit, I mean, the project is the AC, so you have that equipment, so you have 40000 more in depreciation than you would with minus without. And so in year one, it's zero minus negative 35 minus 40, which is equal to negative 5000 So you've got kind of two kind of quote-unquote bad things that influence EBIT. One goes up by 40, the other goes down by 35, so it means that EBIT taxable income would actually go down by 5,000 if we did this project. 40% of that is negative 2,000, so since EBIT would go down, taxes would go down by 2,000. The net income associated with this project is negative 3,000, and so operating cash flow is negative 3,000 plus 40,000, 37,000. Another way that you could look at it is, look, we're going to save $35,000 in costs, and we're going to save $2,000 in taxes. It benefits us by 37,000. Year zero, you got bigger cost savings. So zero minus negative 50 minus 40, means taxable income would actually go up by 10000 So in this case, the tax savings are so big that it leads to an increase in taxable income. So $4,000 more in taxes would be paid. 10000 minus 4000 gives you a net income of 6000 Add that back into depreciation of 40 and your operating cash flow is 46 And again, you can look at it as we save $50,000 so that's 50000 of a good thing. But we have to pay $4,000 more in taxes, so it benefits us to the tune of 46000 So be very careful with you know, the fact that revenue is zero and that costs are negative and that you're subtracting 
the negative number and then you're subtracting depreciation. So don't try to do both steps at once. What happens a lot of times is students try to go negative, negative, it's like a positive, it's, I'll add it, you know, put in your table, put in your analysis, what is the effect on cost, with, minus, without, in this case, it's lower with than without the new air conditioner, and then the fact that it is, the way it affects net income is taken into account by the signs that are incorporated in the equation. So there's no networking capital, so we put it in there for completeness, but it's all zero. Cap, uh, capital spending, spending $90,000 on the equipment that's given, and you're selling it for an after-tax cash flow of 15000 so you have you know year zero and year two, nothing in year one. There's no terminal values associated with this project. It's a two-year project, and you're analyzing all two years. So put it all together. In year zero, you're going to spend ninety on your air conditioning unit you're going to produce cash flows of 37,000 in year two a lot more happens you've got $46,000 in cash flows from increased efficiency um, but you know you're saving 50 but then you've got some more taxes but then you're going to sell it because you're done with it and it's you know old and used and you'll sell it to somebody else and you'll net out at 61,000 so we have our cash flows we're given that the cost of capital is 8%. NPV is negative. Do not purchase the air conditioner. That you're spending $90,000 and the the value of what you're creating is somewhere on the order of 86,000, 87,000 and as a result, you'd be $3,443 uh, less well off. It's not worth the money. If you could get it for less money or you could increase your savings or increase how much you sold it for at the end of the project it might be able to swing that negative number those you know the negative three four four three positive and then you would do it but with the information you have here this is a no on this project